Hi everyone, my name is Christy Aker and I'm the Senior Manager of Elephant Care at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. I am joined today by Dr. Caitlin O'Connell, one of the Sanctuary's long-term international partners. And you can see we are not in Tennessee, but we are in the middle of Africa in Namibia. And we are at Etoshina National Park at Mashora Waterhole, where her research tower is located. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. O'Connell, and for helping us celebrate World Elephant Day. It's an honor to be part of this interview and to be supported by the Elephant Sanctuary and to have this conversation for World Elephant Day. Okay, we just have a couple of questions for you. So tell us a little bit about your organization. How did it start and what is the mission? Well, um, Utopia Scientific started in 2002. Um, my husband, Tim Rodwell, and I were working for the Ministry of Environment and Tourism in Namibia since uh, 1992. And then we went back to graduate school and we really wanted to come back to Namibia to help elephant conservation. And it just seemed like the natural thing to start an organization so that we could raise money to be able to do this research uh, with a focus on elephant science and conservation and asking um, basic research questions that can help inform conservation management. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about the work you're doing here in Atosha? Sure. Um, as our lovely elephant herd is, is approaching, we are looking at family group dynamics and uh, understanding their demography, um, how to develop aging metrics for an arid environment because the elephants in Namibia are a little bit taller. They have a slightly different metric for aging. Um, so we're looking at all kinds of different behavioral questions, how these uh, family groups interact, how their dominance hierarchies work within the family, between families. Uh, we also have questions about how male elephant society works, how males choose to be together in small groups or even larger groups, how they form these bonded groups, um, leaving the family groups and then moving out into elephant male elephant society. So we're, we're really, it's like being an anthropologist and looking at all the different questions of another society that we don't fully understand. So as we speak, Big Mama's family is coming into the waterhole and I see Big Mama is leading up the rear as she normally does. She's heavily pregnant. And this is an amazing family to observe because this family loves and reveres Big Mama. She could be d gone for 30 seconds and they give her this elaborate greeting when she approaches because they all know now that she's struggling, she's slow, but the whole family stays together with her. And we're kind of looking at what, um, how the different family groups have different dynamics. So she's this very benevolent kind of dictator. And I wouldn't even call her a dictator because you never see her get aggressive, only when she really needs to. And so her family is all staying with her, whereas other families, they'll break up when the um, matriarch's pregnant, she'll be in these smaller groups. And all of these elephants are slowing down to stay with her, which is really rather amazing. So how does the work we are doing here specifically help elephants in the wild and in captivity? Well, one advantage of our work, I mean, we're, we're celebrating a 30-year retrospective here of our work. We've been at this waterhole for 30 years and have been watching these same individuals all this time. And one thing we can do is look at, um, you know, I mentioned aging techniques. Uh, we can really, the, the trouble with aging elephants is that you really have maybe up to 30 years of age, 30, 35, and then you have no idea how old the individuals are after 35. So what we're doing here is taking facial metrics and adding another age category. We're adding an elder age category, which is really valuable to the population so we can understand how many elders are in the population and um, how to keep enough elders in the population because they're very important to that society. And we really see that with the males, that these elders kind of keep the younger males in check 
And so knowing that you have a certain number of elders and keeping those elders in your population is a really healthy thing. So that's one of the things that we can do over 30 years. Another thing, you know, if you study any society, if you study them, say, in a really wet year, you'll see a very different dynamic than if you study them in a really dry year. They tend to group up into really big groups in dry years, and you could get a completely different idea of how the population works. So if you do um, your measurements over many years, over decades, then you can see how the environment fluctuates and how the society is influenced by those environmental and then social uh, fluctuations. Okay. What do you think is the greatest problem facing elephants today? One of the biggest problems that elephants face today is really the loss of habitat globally. When you see it in Asia, um, throughout Africa, it's a, a huge, huge problem. And, and then now corridors being, um, being compressed up against, uh, between national parks and uh, farms, those buffer zones are getting smaller and smaller. Um, so that's really the biggest problem. Um, but of course, there's the ivory trade, and that is a huge problem as well. And that, that, that pressure goes up and down. Um, you know, there's different conservation strategies for elephants between East Africa and Southern Africa, and that causes tension. Um, so there's all kinds of uh, political and policy issues. Um, but I would say the, the biggest threat to elephants is loss of habitat. What is something people can do to take action for elephants in their everyday lives? Well, one of the things we're trying to show here is that elephants have character, elephants have emotional intelligence. Elephants are so similar to us in every way. And if we can really pass on that understanding to more people, I really believe that more people will care about elephants and care about what happens to elephants and make choices accordingly. Where can people find your organization to learn more? Our organization is called Utopia Scientific, so it's www.utopiascientific.org. Um, I also have a number of books that I've written about elephants that you can find on my author site, caitlinoconnell.com. So I've written eight books about elephants, and I, I never thought that, that I would do that, but it ended up, I realized that I needed to appeal to young children, and I needed to appeal to young girls that want to be scientists. And then I realized I wanted to write um, fiction so that people that would never pick up a nonfiction book about elephants would learn about elephants through this thriller that I wrote about the ivory trade after studying the ivory trade in, in China. That's amazing. You're appealing to all the different audiences. We feel privileged that the sanctuary is supporting us. And I just love to have people from the sanctuary out to the field site. And you guys are so amazing, you know, knowing how to tell the different elephants right off the bat. And, um, and it's just the other night was so wonderful to be able to share going into the bunker together and seeing all these families that we've been seeing over the past week. And what did that feel like? The bunker was amazing because it puts you really up close and personal into these elephants' lives. Like, I only, I, I actually got emotional when I was in the bunker because working with elephants in captivity, you realize you can't replicate this. You can't give them everything that they experience with these large family groups, having these males come in and out, these elders to teach them these skills. So I actually, being in the bunker was actually emotional for me because I was actually up close seeing this like deep integration of family. And it was just, it struck me as completely different from sitting in the tower, watching them from 80 feet away. It yeah, was amazing. Yeah. You can really see how, you know, the intimate moments where mothers touching baby and just how caring they are with each other. And, and then all this, the craziness of the mothers displacing the sons, and it's just right in your yes. <laughs> immediacy of it. And it's, it's like a spiritual experience. It really <laughs> is. And I totally get why you never want to leave that little <laughs> concrete bunker. It was really amazing. Um, another aspect to it is just watching them 
kind of notice you um, and how they react and how they respond. Um, for the most part, you're pretty much ignored, but there's those youngsters that will kind of kind of want to come up. They want to kick dust at you. They want to steal the microphone, things like that. So that was really interesting to see which individuals chose to kind of acknowledge your presence and really interact with you. Yeah, especially those young bulls that like to push the boundaries in the family with us. You kind of can appreciate why those mothers want to just get them out. Come on, fledge, go. Yes. <laughs> you see all the tusk marks on the rear ends of the young bulls because their mothers are trying to trying to get them to to graduate. <laughs> yes. It's truly been an honor to be a part of the research team, even if it is for just a few weeks, but it has really opened my eyes to just elephants being out here in the wild. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you, Caitlin, for taking the time to answer some questions and for sharing your work with all of the sanctuary supporters around the world. Oh, absolutely. So it's my honor to do that. <laughs>